The movie starts with slow motion dream sequence of a woman named Justine with birds slowly falling behind her. The dream also shows a falling horse, Justine running in a wedding dress, and a huge planet colliding with Earth, causing Earth to blow up into pieces. The movie is separated into two parts and the first part is titled Justine. This part starts with Justine and her husband named Michael, inside a limousine on their way to their wedding reception. The limousine's driver is having a hard time maneuvering the vehicle through the narrow roads leading to the reception venue. They realize that the driver doesn't understand them, so they had to help the driver by maneuvering the vehicle themselves. This issue has caused them to be late for their own wedding reception. When they arrive at the reception, they are welcomed by Justine's sister named Claire and her husband named John. Justine and Michael immediately apologize for being late, but Claire seems disappointed in them. Claire tells them that they have been late for two hours and because of that, they weren't able to follow the program that she's prepared for the reception. Justine asks about a particular star in the sky, and John who is an astronomy enthusiast, says that the star she's talking about is called Antares. When Claire asks them to go inside the reception, Justine runs away with Michael. They go inside a room where Abraham, Justine's favorite horse is sheltered. Justine talks to Abraham for a short moment and the four of them head inside the reception. Inside the room, everyone cheers and claps for the newlyweds. Everyone starts eating and soon enough, the toasts have started. The first one to give his toast is Michael's best man who happens to be Justine's employer named Jack. He says that Justine is a great employee and he spreads out the news to everyone that Justine is now their company's newest art director. He also asks Justine to provide him with a slogan for their company's newest campaign during the celebration. Justine shrugs it off and hugs him, and everyone claps. The next person to give a toast is Justine and Claire's father named Dexter. During his toast, he describes his ex-wife, who is also Justine and Claire's mother, named Gabby, as domineering. Gabby does not take this Anna lightly and she stands up to say that she doesn't believe in marriage and tells Justine to enjoy it while it lasts. Claire notices that Justine isn't happy with what has happened and she pulls her inside a room where she consoles her. The party continues, but a sad Justine decides to go outside and rides a golf car around the field. She sits on the field and stares at the sky. Back at the party, Michael gives her toast to Justine and everyone claps afterwards. Then, Claire announces that they will clear some tables to make room for everyone to dance. While dancing, Claire and John's son named Leo says that he's sleepy. Justine insists on taking Leo into bed, to which John agrees. In the bedroom, after Leo gets to sleep, Justine lies beside him to take a nap. Claire enters the room and tells Justine that the party's only halfway through. Justine tells Claire that she's not feeling well and she feels a dark void slowly taking over her body. Claire leaves Justine to rest. Back at the party, Everyone's gathered around the cake waiting for Justine to come down. Justine is seen taking a bath in a bathtub. John knocks at Justine's door saying that everyone's waiting for the cake cutting event. He doesn't hear any response from Justine. John goes back to the party and expresses his frustration about Justine taking a bath in the middle of her wedding celebration. Eventually, Justine comes down and dances with her husband Michael. The newlyweds proceed into doing the cake cutting. Michael tells Justine that he notices that she's not feeling well tonight. Then, he brings her inside a room and shows her a picture of the plot of land he bought yesterday. He says that this is where they will start their dreams and plant their empire apples together. They start kissing each other and eventually Justine says goodbye and leaves the room. Justine goes inside Leo's room where she's confronted by John. John tells her that she should be happy because this wedding cost him so much money. John tells Justine that he will only feel that his money is well spent if Justine is happy. Justine tells John that she's happy and she thanks him. Back at the celebration, Justine wanders around the party and Jack tells her that he just hired someone named Tim. And his first assignment to him is to get the slogan from her before the party ends. Justine walks away and Tim follows her around. Justine eventually tells him to stop because she won't give any slogans tonight. Justine enters her room and she sees Claire inside. Justine apologizes to Claire about John spending a lot of money on her wedding. Claire tells Justine that it's not about the money. It's about her wanting this wedding. Justine tells Claire that she's happy, but Claire says that she's lying and walks out of the room. Justine goes over to her mother's room and tells her that she's frightened. Gabby simply tells her to stop dreaming and get out of that place. Back at the party, Justine still doesn't seem to be okay at all. Michael stands beside her and Claire has them both drink a bottle of liquor, which makes Justine happy. Then, Claire announces for everyone to follow them outside. On the field, 
everyone starts lighting up lanterns to the sky and everyone's amused by it. Back inside their room, while Michael is taking off his clothes, Justine asks him to sit beside her for a little while. Michael starts kissing her, but she tells him to stop and give her a moment. She zips her wedding dress up and leaves the room. Justine goes outside and walks around the field. While Tim is seen following her, Tim catches up with Justine and she pushes him to the ground and goes on top of him and they start doing the nasty. Afterwards, it's time for Dexter to leave the party, but Justine insists that he stay for the night since she really needs to talk to him. The wedding coordinator tells them there's still room available and she requests for that room to be prepared for her father. Justine is asked by Jack to join him over an onion soup. He tells her that Tim is fired from the job because he wasn't able to get the slogan from her in time. Justine confronts Jack and tells him that she hates him and his firm and she couldn't find the words to describe it. Justine quits the job, which makes Jack furiously leave the party. Justine sees Michael leaving the party and she decides to call off her marriage with him because she cheated on him. Michael is apparently sad and walks away. Justine talks to Claire afterwards, but she says that she hates her so much. Then, Tim offers his services to Justine but she declines because it's not a good idea. Justine goes to her father's room only to find out that he has left for the night through a note on the bed. The following morning, Claire wakes Justine up and tells her that they will go for a hus riding. While doing so, Claire notices that Antares is missing from the sky. The second part of the movie is titled Claire and is a continuation of the first part. This part starts with Claire and John talking to Justine over the phone. John notices that Claire is anxious and she tells him it's because of the planet named Melancholia. John explains that this planet is the reason why Antares isn't visible in the sky anymore since it blocks it out. It will come close to Earth within five days, but scientists say that it won't collide with it. John tells Claire to believe the real scientists and not the fake ones spreading lies on the internet. Justine arrives at Claire and John's estate and it's apparent that she has sunk further down into depression. Justine is having trouble leaving the bed, taking a bath, and eating food. She goes back up to her room. Leo follows her and shows her a picture of the planet Melancholia and says that it's a planet that's hiding behind the sun. Claire enters the room and tells Leo to stop scaring Justine with the planet. One time, while Justine is tending to Abraham, she sees John stocking up supplies in preparation for Melancholia's passing. John tells her not to bring this up to Claire as she gets anxious easily. Justine doesn't say a word to him. The sisters go for a hus riding and Abraham does not listen to Justine, causing her to beat him. Claire tells her not to beat the horse, but Justine doesn't listen. Abraham eventually rests and Justine notices Melancholia is already visible in the sky. During the night, Claire gazes up in the sky to look at the moon and Melancholia at the same time. She sees Justine walking outside and decides to follow her. Eventually, she sees her lying on the ground, without clothes and staring deeply at Melancholia. While having breakfast, John and Leo express their excitement for tomorrow night, the night when Melancholia will pass by Earth. At night, Claire sneaks to view the planet through John's telescope. Afterwards, Claire goes to the internet and reads about Earth and Melancholia colliding at one point. She tries printing out the page but the power goes out. She calls John who immediately enters the room with a lamp, saying that he's prepared for this. John sees the page Claire is printing and ensures her that Melancholia won't hit them. Claire expresses her doubts about the scientists miscalculating, but John says that they don't. The next day, the horses in the stable are unstable. Claire tells Justine that their butler didn't come to work today. Justine says that life on Earth is evil, so if Melancholia will hit Earth that night, no one will miss Earth. This scares Claire especially since Leo has his whole life ahead of him. Around 11 o'clock in the evening, everyone prepares for Melancholia's passing by. They sit in front of the estate and watch as the planet slowly appears right in front of them. Claire tells John that the planet looks friendly, but she's still afraid of it. John tells her that Melancholia is now moving away from Earth and it should now look small within five minutes. Claire starts to have a panic attack, but John is able to calm her down. She asks to take a look at Melancholia once more and she sees that it's now getting smaller. This calms down Claire and she cries out of relief. The next morning, Claire invites John for a cup of tea, but John seems to be rattled about something he has seen in the telescope. Claire closes her eyes for a moment, and John isn't there anymore when she opens her eyes. She tries checking Melancholia's size and she notices that it's starting to get bigger. She starts panicking and looks for John inside the house but to no avail. Claire goes into the stable and sees her husband dead after overdosing on pills. She hides John's dead body by stacking hay on top of it and lets go of Abraham. During breakfast, 
Claire tries checking Melancholia's size once more, and it definitely is getting bigger. She starts panicking and decides to flee, but the car engines won't work. Justine is evidently calm while Claire panics. The rain starts pouring. Claire uses the golf car to flee the estate, but Justine says that she won't go with her. The golf car engine stops in the middle of the ride and it starts hailing. Claire and Leo walk back to the estate, where Justine is sitting and waiting for them. Claire tells Justine that she wants them to be together on the terrace when Melancholia hits Earth. Justine tells Claire that her plan is awful. Outside of the estate, Leo tells Justine that he's afraid of Melancholia hitting them. Justine comforts him by saying that they can build a magic cave where they can hide. She hugs Leo and cries. Then, the two gather sticks to use for their magic cave. After building the cave, Leo, Justine, and Claire sit inside it while holding hands. Justine and Leo look calm as they wait for Melancholia to hit Earth, while Claire cries in despair. They hold hands until Melancholia collides with Earth, destroying everything through a sea of flames. For those confused about the plot of the movie, don't worry, I was too. The movie is about mental illness. Justine had depression while Claire's storyline was about anxiety. Kristen Dunst herself has gone through depression and so this role to her was very close to home. You can tell in the film that Justine was truly sad, but there was no real explanation for it. Just like depression, what did you guys think of the movie? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.